The next few videos will discuss tests that you would use for categorical data. But first I want to introduce some background, especially explaining why we even need a different set of tests, as well as some information about choosing the appropriate test. So what is meant by categorical data? Well, it's simply data where you have counts of items in discrete categories rather than measurements of some continuous variable. So some geological examples could be counts of mineral types in rock, counts of rock type in a conglomerate, or counts of fossils at a location or in a time period, or even counts of north or south paleomagnetic direction. Another property of categorical data is that the categories are mutually exclusive. Another way of saying this is that they're contingent. So a rock can't be both sandstone and granite, so that means that more counts that you have of sandstone in a sample of 100 rocks means that you must have fewer granites. More north measurements means fewer south. So the abundance of one category is contingent or dependent on the abundance of the other categories. So here's a hypothetical example where we have counts of rock types found in a conglomerate. So why can't we just use a t-test to determine if there's more rhyolite in this conglomerate than in another conglomerate? Well, the first problem is that we only have a single value. We know there's 37 rhyolites, but we don't have a mean or a standard deviation. We don't know how variable the rhyolite count might be. We could presumably visit a whole bunch of locations and count 100 different rocks at each, but that would be extremely impractical. It'd take forever to do that. But even if we did spend the time and collect many different counts, they're still discrete data. They're not continuous data. And so parameters like standard error or the variance only apply to continuous data. So therefore tests that, that use variance or use standard error, like the t-test or the f-test or ANOVA, don't technically apply to this type of discrete data. So there are actually different statistical probability distributions for discrete data, like the binomial distribution shown down here, which you'll learn about in the upcoming videos. So when choosing what kind of categorical test you want to run, the main consideration is the question that you're asking. In one situation, you might have some prior expectations from theory or from some independent information for what the counts might be. So your goal then is to see if the counts in your sample agree with that prior expectation. So for example, in this sort of somewhat contrived question here, are craters equally distributed in the northern and southern hemisphere on the moon? Well, uh, because both hemispheres are the same size, and therefore each makes up half the surface area of the moon. So our simplest explanation, expectation might be that 50% of the craters should be in each hemisphere. You know, we could have a more sophisticated expectation we want, but the simplest we can say, okay, we should have half in the northern hemisphere, half in the southern hemisphere. So we can then um, count the craters in each hemisphere and compare that value to our expectation. And keep in mind that the expectation doesn't have to be 50%. That's just the example that we have here. So this type of test is called testing for goodness of fit. You'll typically have one sample, like craters on the moon, and you'll have two categories or more than two categories. So we'll talk about goodness of fit tests in the next video. The other situation is where you have counts in more than one sample. Let's say you counted different rock types in two different layers of conglomerates, or in three different layers, or many different layers. Um, we have no prior expectation. We had, have no reason to think that there should be 25% granite or 50% granite. There's no theory or, or, or other evidence to tell us that. So we probably instead want to know if the abundances of the different rock types are the same or are they significantly different in the multiple layers. So in that case, we're performing a test for independence. So more on tests for independence in future videos as well.